it's Jamila again, and we're going to talk about hypothyroidism for me. Uh, full disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional at all. I never went to medical school. Everything I'm telling you is my own opinion. Um, everything I'm feeling is for myself. Talk to your doctor, your nutritionist, whatever. But don't take whatever it is I'm saying as facts um, because I can only speak for me. Um, today I want to talk about what I can't eat. I'm about nine weeks in now to this journey of hypothyroidism that came at me from like out of the blue. And um, it's taken me seven to eight weeks to realize some of these things I just can't eat anymore and some of them are really sad number one that I can't eat anymore is alcohol which isn't a big deal because I give up alcohol all the time and I have these like ebbs and flow where I want to drink and then I don't want to drink I've never been someone who needed to drink to have fun so yeah it's not it's not a problem um Although my birthday's coming up and I wanted to have a bottle of champagne. So now I guess I get to have apple cider. I don't know. I might drink some sh a glass and deal with the consequences later. Yeah, but no alcohol. That was uh, first advised to me by my doctor when all of this started happening. Um, and I just realized that I just, as of right now, I just don't have a taste. It could just be because I don't feel good. Um, but no alcohol. Number two. No beans. So I was a vegan, no vegetarian for like a long time. So beans are a staple of my diet. I eat refried beans all the time. I put beans on salads. I put beans in soups. It's cheap protein. So if you're on a budget, it's great. Soak some beans, boil them for 10 to 15 minutes and use them throughout the week. Now I can't have beans. When I have beans, I get abdominal cramps, which I've never had before extremely bad gas again never had before and I just feel like my body isn't digesting it I get like indigestion that sits like right in here um, again something that I've never had before so it's an experience um, I haven't tried lentils yet or like garbanzo beans or split peas or lima beans I did do some research online and they said that like people who have a hard time digesting beans could possibly have like lima beans, which I don't eat. Lima beans, butter beans, I don't care, they're nasty. Um, black eyed peas, um, ligmans, I think that's what it's called, I could possibly have, which is why I'm thinking like garbanzo beans, split peas, and of course, um, lentils. I should be able to eat lentils. I haven't tried it. Um, I'm kind of getting comfortable to, with what I can eat. So I'm beans. I'm really hoping I can eat corbanzo beans because I like hummus and I like hummus and falafel. If I can't eat those two things, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I can live without the refried beans. But I don't know if I can live without the hummus. It's a great thing to put on like crackers which we'll get into until a second <laughs> uh well we're gonna get to right now gluten i have developed a gluten intolerance believe it or not um i didn't really realize i had gluten sensitivity i should say sensitivity versus intolerance i don't really know what the difference is other than whenever i eat anything with wheat except for a few items um and that is sourdough bread rye bread and the premier protein shakes the blueberry one so far um, and I'm looking back to like when I had like a quesadilla my stomach hurt um, we made wet burritos because I wanted a wet burrito I was like I'm gonna eat it whatever so you know I made it it was all homemade except for the tortilla like the beans and everything and then like I just remember like doubling over in pain from it um, then like the next day I was like I'm not gonna do a wet burrito even though we have leftovers I decided to do flour tortillas, quesadilla, and got sick from that. So 
it wasn't until like I started doing research online and found out like people had like gluten sensitivities. So I tried it again. And this time I made a um, grilled cheese sandwich, something again, should be able to eat bread, right? On a whole wheat bread. Mm -mm. I don't even think I got half of it down. I don't even think I got a quarter of it down. Um, So I am at this point in my life getting rid of gluten, which isn't too hard. I mean, it is hard because there's so, gluten is on so much there. It's not too bad because I've been able to live off of like rice noodles. I'm lucky I live in a state where I can get rice noodles very easily. They're in like almost every store and um, rice. Everything is, oh, and potatoes. Rice, potatoes, and rice noodles is what I live off of right now. And everything I cook has to go with it. It is what it is. Oh, I have grits. But I haven't really felt the need for savory grits lately, so we'll see. Another thing I can no longer eat, and I have no idea why, just it doesn't sit well with my stomach, is broccoli. Can I eat broccoli? Which is so sad because I make the best cheddar and broccoli soup. And um, I actually made some when this first started happening. But I made a nice big pot and I remember taking a couple bites and like, oh, this isn't gonna sit right. But it was like my only meal of the day. So I was like, just push through, try to eat it. It's like a quarter of a cup. Literally, it's like a quarter of a cup. And I couldn't do it. And I ended up throwing it away because I could not eat it. So last week we went and got pho and I got beef pho, vegetarian style. So I, and um, they gave me carrots, broccoli, onions, bean sprouts jalapenos which we'll talk about in a second and um i remember saying i don't really want the carrots i want the broccoli and i you know put extra broccoli in and it was like a really like i don't know if you ever got full you get like these really big bowls and what i did was take my really big bowl and made a really really small bowl because i'm not able to eat as much as i used to eat and i was sick for like two days i everything i ate just wanted to come up And I was like, what? So again, I did some research and there are people who cannot process broccoli. I could possibly be one. So right now broccoli is out of my diet, which is devastating because I used to eat broccoli and chicken all the time. Like that's my go-to meal, broccoli, chicken and rice or broccoli, cauliflower and rice, broccoli and like eggs and for breakfast as an omelet. Um, But yeah. And The last thing I can no longer eat, which is probably the thing that defines me the most, is spicy food slash spices. Like I cannot, the only thing I can really eat right now is lemon pepper, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. Anything outside of that, mm mm-mm. And when I talk about like no spicy food, like black pepper is spicy for me. Like when it hits my tongue, it's like, oh my God, did I just bite into a habanero? Like, oh my God. And like, I'm devastated because I eat jalapenos, like with my meals, yellow peppers, and those little red bell peppers that grow on the bush. Like I can bite into those chai, uh, what's that, what's those are called Thai chilies. Thai chilies, can't have it. No Valencia, no tapatillo. I can handle Louisiana style hot sauce, which is amazing to me, but it tastes like vinegar. Um, Yesterday I did use a little bit of, can we think of it? It's the Orient, figure out how to type it right here or there or something like that. Um, It was spicy, but it's very vinegary and I could handle it a little bit. But when I initially tasted it, I was like, oh my God, I can't eat this. And I pushed through because I can't live without spicy food like it just it is what it is my tongue needs to get its act together my stomach needs to get its act together it needs to learn how to bear with it because jalapenos go with everything i put jalapenos in my soup and i'm not talking like the pickled jalapenos i'm talking like raw jalapenos don't devein it don't deseed it just give it to me fried jalapeno at the side oh my god a little bit of salt on top of it it's so good um so like 
yeah, there's been a couple barbecue sauces I've tasted and I was like, where, why is this spicy? Like I'm used to it being sweet. So something's going on with my tongue right now. And I don't know if that's just like my tongue or if it's like my thyroid or if it's my digestive tract. Is it too super, super sensitive? I don't know, but I can't handle it. And then the last thing I have to tell you guys, I'm no longer able to eat to consume is caffeine. It hits my stomach and I get sick. And my doctor told me like from day one to cut back on caffeine, which is crazy because I only drink a cup a day. It's not like a big cup. Like I have a big cup of caffeine, but it's watered down. Um, I typically don't drink coffee afternoon or caffeine afternoon because it keeps me up. So I normally drink a cup of coffee in the morning. And if I want something hot, it's normally an herbal tea. I have tons of herbal teas. I don't even drink black coffee after like 12 o'clock. Like it just wires me. Um, but lately coffee has made me sick. So a couple sips, not even like a half a cup and my stomach is hurting. And of course when my stomach hurts, I don't want to eat. And if I don't want to eat, I don't want to drink. And I can't go through this vicious cycle of not eating and drinking because I'm not getting better or I won't get better. So I've been very mindful of what it is I can eat and can't eat. Sorry, had a little distraction. Um, I was saying how I am very mindful of what I eat and how it makes me feel. Things that make me feel good, I eat more of. Things that make me feel bad, I eat less of. So as of right now, those are the bad things. Some of them I can deal with, alcohol I can deal with. Caffeine I can deal with, like I can't even have decaf. Um, people who know me know that I love Starbucks, who is my Sancho. But um, I think I can deal with not having caffeine. I cannot live without spicy food. I don't think I can live without broccoli. It'll be difficult living without gluten, flour, and flour byproducts because it is everywhere. But that's it. So I do want to again remind you, if you have not um, and you think you need it done, go to your doctor's and have your complete thyroid test done and then also you're not alone i kind of feel alone even though like my friends and family are there for me but online you are not alone there are people out here who are suffering you can talk to us most of us uh, message us let us know you know what you're dealing with because a lot of us are dealing with the exact same thing especially if you have extreme con symptoms like what I consider extreme um, if you're not sure somewhere on my page there's a video about that um, I just want to say thank you for coming over watching listening to me ramble because I'm a rambler I could probably make this a two-hour session seriously um, get checked out if you need it if you feel like you need it and um, last but not least, I am not a medical professional. So make sure you talk to your own doctor and heed their advice for your body. Um, that's it, that's all. So, and, and of course, listen to your body. I should say that, listen to your body. So if you're noticing something's not working and your doctors are pressing you on it, let them know that it's not working um, because you, you are your greatest advocate. That's it. Thank you.